Good afternoon everybody, how's things? It's been a week since we did our last block and uh, doesn't time fly? Lots of things going on in between times but uh, all chilled out today and we're on the last of the set one of the mini stencils. We've done three blocks so far. This is the last one of the set of four but do you know what I've I've had a you know I've seen the messages this week and I know not everybody's sort of wanting to do the cross and that's absolutely fine. What you could do is you could perhaps do the same pattern that I'm going to do today, ignore the cross and perhaps put a square in or you could actually bring in the flower or the star and do a different version of it. But honestly, once you've seen the pattern that I put in the middle, you're going to absolutely love it. So you need to give it a go anyway. But absolutely fine. If you don't want to do the cross, you really don't have to. Do something of your own design and I'll show you actually after it how... Um, how to do a square and actually create the same pattern so you get something a little bit different if that's what you want to do but for now what do we we do oh big thank you to jane thank you jane for uh suggesting vegan uh options hot chocolate to me because it's got no dairy in it and yes i'm absolutely loving it john did have to get it from amazon because we couldn't get it from the supermarket but um, it's all good so here we are hot chocolate in hand and uh, of course my stencils i've got my square with the sort of squarey dots on there i've got my uh main cross and my main cross shape so my, my square and my, my shape i've also got my instructions and what i'm going to do today there's the one that we're doing i'm going to simplify this a little bit i'm going to go off off piece and as we know on the inside see what it says cross dot center and dots frame i've got different variations so this is the one that's on the front cover showing all these different bits and pieces to here but I'm going to do something a little bit simpler because I want to focus on the middle section. So um, it's entirely up to you. You can follow along or you can do your own thing. Uh, so I'm just going to show you how it goes. So are we all ready then? I've got those to hand and got my uh, my block. Here we go. And oh, it's just lovely to see all these names. Hello, everybody. Lovely to sort of see you. It really is. Especially on a Sunday afternoon. You know, what are you been what have you been doing all day? So, I'm actually designing something new, so um, yeah, I've been uh, working on that this weekend. Okay, I've got a little mark just so I know where my my squares sort of going, so I can sort of centralise it up a little bit. And I am going to come straight in with pen, my fine liner here, and I'm going to mark these sort of lines and squares and things off. So here we go. I'm going to go inside. Oh, by the way, I, I did actually wash my bit of fabric with the uh, gel pen, well, let's say the gel pen, with the aloe vera gel and the pencils, and I'll, I've got that here. It's a little bit creased, but it shows it's been in the wash. Uh, it did actually work, but I'm still just going to stick with water, I think. Oh, my goodness, Sally, you're braver than I am. I bet you're shattered. You are. I do actually have your tile swap, Sally. Um, I'm going to post it tomorrow. So didn't get a chance. Friday. It needs a stamp on it. You forgot. Never mind. I can sort it. Okay, so here we go. I'm going to put these little marks in. Oh, here we go. There you go. Uh, right, yes, I did too. Whether it's because I'm old school and I prefer the water, I don't know. But uh, it's entirely up to you what you use. Just last week we had a bit of an experiment just to see how it would work out. Uh, of course, you know, it's just about trying things, isn't it? And you see what works best for you. Oh, Jane's got a secret project. <laughs> Do I know the one? I don't know. I've got a few a few secret projects on the go. I've got a few things that I'm trying to get done. So uh, I've been all at that. And of course, still trying to finish the bathroom. Yeah, lots going on, lots. But then again, that always is. It's nice to be busy, isn't it? But do you know what? It's nice to actually slow down and just take this a block at a time. So rather than think, oh, I've got to finish this in a week. I'm enjoying the process. And just doing one block a week, even if it takes me a few days afterwards to colour it in. It doesn't really matter because we're, you know, we're all in the same boat, aren't we? We're all doing these 
I know some of you actually were still waiting for fabric. I hope you've got it. Um, so don't worry about it. Don't try and rush to keep up. You know, just do the bits as you can or, or maybe follow along and do the ones we're doing now and then go back and finish the others after. And of course, after this one, if you want to, you can actually create more of these and do the quilt with just these four stencils. Of course, we're going to move on and do the uh, set twos next week. All right, there we go. So I've got all my uh, little dots in place there, our little, ten little squares. Okay, just while we've got a minute then, here we go. This is the uh, the one, if you remember from last week, this is the one I, I did with the, the gel. And you can see that after I left it for a couple of days and it's... Uh, it's dried pretty good and it's, you know, it's done exactly what it's supposed to have done. My only thing is, see, it's not gone on the back, it's okay, is I couldn't blend it as well as uh, with water. That was my only thing. But uh, here's the square and the circle that I did. So they both sort of work in the same way. Again, though, did I do this with the water? I did, didn't I? Um, it's, yeah, you can see. And, of course, that's where I actually brushed water over it and that's where I didn't. So you can see if you don't put water on it, let it dry, or oh, aloe vera gel, then it is going to fade. So make sure that you actually apply a bit of water on your pencils if you're colouring in. And of course, there's the fine liners, just doing another check. They've not moved, which makes me really happy. So, okay. So I said I was going to do something a little bit different with this and you can mix and match, do whatever you want to do. That's absolutely fine. So let's go a bit bigger. There we go. And again, you could do this with, if you want, with a straight edge, you can line it up. But you know what? I'm just going to go freehand and we're going to join them together. Like that. Okay. And you see, I've not done it with this one here. I've just started there. Because what I'm going to do is work my way around all of these shapes. I'm going to fill in those bits as I go. All right. Prime and that for a little bit of a, a bead or something, aren't they, those? Or you can, you know, you continue and add stripes into this if you want to. All right. Hold on, we go. So I'll just leave that for a minute. I'm going to go this way. Being left-handed, I find it easier to uh, do that. And then I'm not leaning on the last one. What I am going to do in the corner here, I'm going to bring that in. Like that. I'm going to create a square in the corner. All right. Again, there are no rules, so if you want to do something different, the dots are there as a guide, just to give you a bit of an even sort of space between each one, so you know that if you're creating a pattern, it's going to sort of match all the way around. That's the idea of those. But whether you incorporate them into your design, I mean, I could have done them with a friction pen and then just drawn this line. There's a rectangle and those squares would have disappeared but it uh, doesn't matter it's all oh, just filling them in there oh hey chris that's okay uh oh it's like it is your oh i don't know i think there was a little change to them further on it might be that uh you'll have to send me a picture and i'll i'll show you We've got a, a couple of variations of this. So the variation I'm using may be just a little bit different than yours, but not to worry. Has yours got more dots, but is it more sort of like that? If so, you can just still draw to those. That's absolutely fine. It's a, a miscommunication between John and myself. So uh, not to worry, it's still doable. It just means you'll have a slightly different corner shape than I will. He, uh, he assured me that I'd got the same as everybody else. But obviously I haven't. But please don't worry about it. You're still going to get a lovely design. There. Oh, there we go. I bet if I looked at another set, I'd have a different one. <laughs> uh, beauty of working with your husband, eh? Ruth, as I've just said, don't worry about it. It's just going to give you a slightly different version of this. It's 
So if yours is a little bit different, you can still join the dots in the same way. You're just going to get a slightly different corner. Just go with it. Just go with it. If you're not sure, if you want to send me a picture of the stencil, then uh, I'll show you how you could do that. But uh, that'll teach me for uh, just trusting him, won't it? <laughs> and going, okay, and then mine's the same as everybody else. It's not a problem. It means we're all going to get different, doesn't it? Christine, it's uh, yeah, it comes to triers, doesn't it? Yeah, <laughs> never mind. Okay, there we go. As long as we've got some dots or lines we can work to, it gives us a similar sort of design there. There we go. I'm making my way around. And of course, if you wanted to use the same design as one of the other frames, you could have every single frame the same if you wanted to. There you go. So I've got something like that. As long as we've got like a, a line we can work to around there, we're sort of all good. Okay. So moving on then into the next little bit. What I'm going to do is I'm going to, again, I'm going to use that sort of shape as a guide. And I'm going to bring a line now this way. Now I'm going to do this freehand on purpose because I want it to be slightly sort of movable. I don't want to have um, it too straight. Okay, all the way down. And then the same here. You see, just slight, slight wobble, it's a natural. That's fine. All the way down. It's pretty straightforward. Okay, see, all the way down. And into the next one. And along we go. I find it actually easier to draw one line straight down first and then come back and do the other. But feel free, do whatever you want to do. And same here. So I'm using those little marks to uh, just give me a little bit of a, a guide as to where this line's going. All right. And then same again. Along here. You see, just sort of flows down the side. Quite a quick one, this, actually. It's a nice little frame. Even if you're doing a, a quick card, you've got a topper already doing this around the outside works nicely and you could actually stitch this one if you wanted to it's quite an easy one to do and then the next bit all the way down you see just sort of easing it along there we go as we go so I think we've actually got the gist of these now it's it's a case that the instructions are there to sort of help you and give you a, a, a general idea, but you can go off and do your own thing. You don't have to stick with it. It's quite nice to do something different, isn't it? And what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to put a line in the corner there. So let's have a look. I'm going to do the same on all, just to give me a, a bit of a fold line in between. As I say, you, you're going to have slightly different there. So. Okay, there we go. And then back to that sort of shape there. And I'm going to add in an extra line. Just sort of like an, a little aura following that line all the way down. Just uh, keeping it a similar width all the way along. So you can go to just the corner. See just to that sort of mitre there and that one. Just to there. And here I could do... Same thing, just follow it down each little one, keeping it a similar distance from the outer edge. Ooh. 
a bit wide that one, it's okay. There we go. And then again, let's bring this one so into there, see? And then back down and along, following this shape. Again, trying to keep the distance a bit similar. But again, I'm not minding having that little bit of a wobbly line there. It's okay. Same with this one. I think it depends what you've got underneath you. I've got my green cutting mat underneath me, so it's helping me. I've got a few ridges in it. There we are. And along. See, in there as well. Turning it round. And same again. It's just sort of, uh, it's a nice touch experiment, try different things. Of course, you could always do it with your, your friction pen first and see what's going to look like. A bit like you would do with a pencil on a piece of paper. And that's what I do. Sometimes I will actually draw things in pencil first and think, well, do you know what? Yeah, I'm going to go with it or no, I'm not. Just a little bit of a safety zone, isn't it? And again, round we go. So at the moment, all we've done is draw some lines. There's nothing too taxing in this one. It's quite a nice little frame to do, as I say. Same on this side. So it's nice to see that uh, you're using different coloured fabrics. Um, a lot of you put colour on, some haven't, but do you know what? They're just as beautiful. So you go with what you want to do, it's absolutely fine. Don't uh, think you've got a copy. Okay, I'm going to put some stitch lines in now. Of course there, I'm going to follow that round. It's going to go around the corner, see? Again, you want them quite close because I'm going to do the same on the other side. I want a couple of rows, see? It looks like we've actually stitched it in. And again, this is just going off a little bit from the instructions. There's something similar in there, but you don't have to do something exactly. And, uh, it's quite nice. I actually like doing this, little dotted lines. Again, this gives a little bit of dimension without being too technical. Again, I could stay away. The other side. Again, you don't have to match these dots or lines up. You know what stitching's like, doesn't always work that way. That's it. These are sort of going that way today. It's not fully planned, but being that they're there, let's do it. And I'll have again. Just sort of keep it going. So to uh, these ones and a long bit there. Okay, so I've gone all the way along. Turning it round, same again. You see, just taking my time. Let's have a look at it a bit distance. You see how it's sort of following itself around. Just that bit of detail gives it the difference. And we go so not too taxing at all this it's just take your time with it and uh, see where it leads you'll notice as well I'm doing it to um, back and forth a few times I think that's more a habit than a necessity so maybe just do two or you can you can do one it doesn't matter see I'm getting a similar effect anyway so I think again it's just uh, something I do a lot but not necessary there you, go. you don't realize you're doing it till you actually stop and analyze yourself for a minute do you but there you go see definitely don't need to and on to the next one and down again see I'm doing the both sides and then the next. I I do find it a lot more therapeutic to 
go down one side than the other. Just works that way. Nice to sort of uh, give it something, isn't there? Same on the other side now. Again, these lines are falling sort of even because I'm sort of in that mode and they're all of a similar size. So uh, that's absolutely fine. Of course, the main thing with this is going to be the inner bit. So the frames, just the dressing around the outside. You could actually do this with real ribbon, couldn't you? You could uh, cut these slots either side and actually thread the ribbon through. Oh, yeah, that's it. Thank you. So, always miss a bit. There you go. Just checking. You're watching. <laughs> yeah. I do that a lot, don't I? I think... Uh, See, sometimes I'm working, I'm looking at the camera, or through the camera, and then I'm looking at the fabric underneath the camera. And the combination of the two means that inevitably, at some point, I'm going to miss something. Well, that's okay. I can come put it back in. It's fine. Here we go, see? Just all working in the same direction. Here we go. Oh, thank you, Jane. It's the it, it's from um, Sewing Street. It's salmon. It's their regular uh, cotton fabric. So it wasn't too expensive at all, really. So there you go. That's the one I've sort of used. You see, but I've added an extra line in just to give me a little bit more detail. So what else does it sort of suggest? Let's have a look on the pattern here. It, it's showing that we've got. Sort of, a, so you might have that kind of shape in your corner, so you could still do a, a diamondy shape and then take it around the corner. That's the one I've obviously got a different version. John talked to him, he plays with these stencils and then doesn't tell me. So here I've got a series of like lines around the inside giving me a thicker border. You see there, so we're gonna go ahead and put those in. And for this, I do have as well as having my 03 pen. I'm going to use uh, my 05 as well. There it is, look. It's just a bit thicker. And uh, it's about choosing what you want to do with it. Let's just go in a bit bigger here. So what I can do, my thicker lines, see what we're actually going to do, I'll show you on my bit scrap here, is we're going to do a um, sort of a thick line, like so, and then a thin one either side, like that. That's the sort of the, the tangle or the pattern. So where do you want that thick line to be? Do you want it to be here in the middle of each one? Or do you want it to actually cover this bit here? You know, it depends where you, you go. Or you can have it in both. So let's have a look with the friction pen first. You could have it here. So that would be your thick section. And then you'd have a thin line either side. And then you'd have the same here. And on either side. And then see you've got this space in the middle. Would you put another one there or leave it? Or would you actually put it there? You see what I mean? And then there. I kind of like to have it in, in built, I think, included there. So it's just nice to check it out first to see which one you're going to go with. And then I'm going to do... This outside bit with, or oh, let's outside bit, the thicker bit there, look, with my 05 pen. Okay. So underneath it, each one of these, I'm going to come in with that pen. And again, you don't have to do this. You could just do stripes and then you could colour this in with something different. But it's all about that little bit of drama, isn't it? Okay. Now, when you come to the corner, I'm still going to use or incorporate that bit there. And what I'm going to do is do a mitre, like an angled line there, see? Okay, turning it round. So again, see, just sort of creating that box around. 
on the line. Okay, let's pull out of it so you can sort of see where it's going there. Okay. Now again, if there are slightly different thicknesses, don't matter. They're all part and parcel of a design. So it's uh, not going to be a single bit that you see. You're going to see the whole piece. Okay. And again. And again, if you're not sure, you could actually draw or go around the whole thing in a friction pen first just to see what you think. And then you could go back in with the pen after if you, you're happy with it. Oh, it's, I know it's it's your sort of first time drawing on fabric, or some of you it is, and you want to get it right. It's not as cheap as paper, so we want to do as much as we can to make sure that when you put pen to fabric, you know that it's what you want, and you're not going to be wasting any. Oh, I must have know. I have half an hour there. There we are. So I'm going to go back in with my O3 there. Oh, and I missed that one. There we are. I think I've done it all now. <laughs> oh, I'm going to be checking yours later, Sue. See if you've missed any. <laughs> and, um, there you go. No, I don't mind. I'd rather you tell me. I would. You see, every time I come to these corners, I'm drawing my lines towards me. So I'm not trying to draw them on an angle. It's just about working alongside them, see? And again, using the slightly thicker pen it just makes life a little bit easier. You, you're not rubbing a small or a fine line so much over the fabric. This one's covering better. And you notice it's not really, it's not bleeding. Look, it's not bleeding. Of course, it depends on the fabric you're using. So just check first. But if your O3 has been fine, there's no reason why your O5 will be any different. All right, last little bit here. I'm putting these blocks in. And I want to go again. Okay. So... I'm going to put that one down. I'm going to go back to my O3. And I'm going to put a line either side. You see? So there's the... That red's okay. A line out. It's my friction pen. But on each side... And you see, look, that's where that other one would have been had I done them in the middle. Well, I'm not going to do that one. Of course, that'll iron out in a short while. And then even around those corners, same thing. And then back to the straight almost. I'm putting those lines in. And of course, if you really need to, you can use a straight edge, but I don't think you need to. I think it's just uh, about going in with it. It's a small area, so need to uh, go too much there. No. no, just look at this. I'm not looking at the rest. I'm not seeing if they're the same or not. Just adding a bit in as we go along. There we are, see. And whilst I'm sort of working my way along, I'm thinking, do I want to put another one of these in the middle? Or do I want to leave it? Or something else I can add? I always think if in doubt add a raw bubbles, that's a good a good one to look at. Oh, I'm gonna put bubbles in this one. Alright, we'll have a look at it in a minute. Okay, so that actually is on the uh, the main one on the front cover. This pattern is. And you know you can have as many or as few as you want in. There we go. It's quite a strong one, isn't it, really? I think what I am going to do is I'm going to come in and there we go. Just sort of in the middle of each one. Let's do it here so you can see. I'm going to come in just put a little V in the top there. I just want a bit more. I just want it to look like it's going underneath. And I think at the top there, 
I'm going to have another one coming out. Okay, this is where, you know, it's a little bit different. So again, I could still do it there. This shows that, yeah, the instructions are there, but you can mess about with them a bit. Can uh, change things up a bit. And, uh, I'm still with my three, by the way. I've not changed back. It's quite a small little V. So I'm not too worried about filling it in with the, my O3. Here we are. And around. So same sort of thing here. And I am actually lining them up, see, top and bottom there. Sort of lining it up, top and bottom. And there. Just going to keep working my way around. So let's just pull that out a little bit. It's nice, isn't it? Different. I've got another extra step I'm going to put in in a minute to see how that looks. And just think when these are all put together, you know, and I don't know whether you're going to use it as a wall hanging or it's going to go over the side of a chair or something. You're going to look at this and remember. But uh, yeah, I miss those corners and we were actually doing this together. And uh, it's, you know, it's little memories, isn't it? We're building up and hopefully you're speaking to each other over the, you know, over the site, you know, message each other. And you're all saying how you like each other's work. So that's lovely. It's just nice to encourage, isn't it? And if you've never done this before, how are you enjoying it? Is it? something that you're really up for or if you uh, are a quilter already and it's just your first tangling then honestly any quilting bits and pieces any hints and tips we're all open to them it'd be lovely to know how uh, how you do things because of course there are so many ways of doing the same thing and, uh, i did like the harry potter <laughs> no. earlier it's it's uh, not a blanket it's a quilt <laughs> it was really funny okay so just to sort of reiterate that this is going underneath i'm gonna add a line top and bottom top and bottom and then it sort of gives this a little bit of interest and it also adds that extra line at the bottom there see i've not gone too thick I'm still with my O3. It's working nice. I think when I get to the corner, I'm just going to put one in the corner there and then follow it round. So I see I'm ignoring that and I'm coming in just with a line on those little triangles there. So you could have done a half bubble there if you wanted to. You could do a thick line. And you could do bubbles around the edge. There's so many different things in it. Just keep it simple with these little lines. You'll be amazed at how it sort of changes and grows along the way. No rattle rock. And along we go. So I've actually got some more of the fabric that I'm doing for the quilt because I'm thinking actually of perhaps putting this in the car because as you know, electric car and I do have to stop off and get it charged up. Sometimes it can be quite chewy, you know, if you're sat in the car waiting. So I'm going to have this one in the car and then I've got my, uh, you know, my, uh, my bag with my cup and uh, pens holder in it. I've got that now done in the same fabric. And I'm also in the process of got making a, a little bag, you know, using my bag pattern in the same fabric. So again, anything that I need in the car or think I need to take into the services, you know, pop a bit of makeup and my hairbrush, things like that. So, you know, it's all in the car and it's all matching. I think it's going to be lovely. Oh, do you know, I thought that, Sue, a little bit like a piano. But, you know, piano, if you were doing a piano, you would have uh, combinations of twos and threes, wouldn't you? And then, uh, yeah. Two, two black notes and three black notes and then yeah I used to I, I suppose I could still play the piano I did play it quite a lot but, uh, more saxophone 
and then they not really had much time since to do all that. Oh, Jane, I know it's I know. that travel bag, and it's lovely, isn't it? Really useful as well, and that's what I like about things. So, there we are. It's not as heavy if I bring the frame in. There you go. You see, it's not as heavy as this one, but actually, kind of nice. I like that. So let's let's have a look. I'm going to bring the cross in now, and as I say, I know not everybody's wanting to do the cross. It's fine, but um, it's it's in the section, so I'm going to go ahead and do it. But of course, you don't have to. Just do want to show you the the tangle that we use. And again, if you think, do you know what? Instead, I'm going to do um, a different shape in the middle, maybe a square or a circle. You can use the same tangle I'm going to use in here. There's it. Uh, nice to do okay so there's my first bit i'm going to bring in or oh well if i can find it there we go my sort of cross shape there it is now you see it's a little bit smaller that's because it's going to give us a little bit of a frame around it so whether you want to do it this way or whether you want to just have it the main shape but it's quite nice to have that aura instead of um Drawing it freehand, you've just got the shape there. Okay. It's quite a nice uh, cross shape, you know, I, I like it with that extra sort of a definition at the ends. It's always a good one to do, although, yeah, it's moved, it doesn't matter. There we go. Okay. So all I'm going to do to the points is I'm going to join them. And that's all I'm going to do to that bit. I'm not going to go in any more detail than that. Because it's all going to happen inside. There we are, all the way around. Okay, just gives it that little bit of definition, doesn't it? And if, let's have a quick look at this. A tangle in the middle. Okay, it looks a bit complicated, doesn't it? Um, what on earth is going on with it? So let's let's sort this out once and for all. Okay, it's not a difficult tangle. It just takes a little bit of focus. First thing we're going to do then is we're going to split off the, the space. We're going to create a square in the middle. Okay, there we go. And then the ends, we're going to take off the triangles. Same there. And this one, and this one. Okay, so we've got sections. Now this one is twice as big as the others. So it stands to reason that what we would do here is split that one off as well. Okay, so we've got sections. So the first one, I'm gonna start in the middle. Okay, I'm not gonna turn it round as I go because uh, it's, it's quite a small area, but I want to watch, you watch what I'm doing. I'm going to go from the top point here and I'm going to pull out slightly. Okay. So this is where I ended. So I'm going to start there. I'm going to turn it a bit. Start there. I'm going to pull out. So that's where my pen ended. Start again and pull out. That's where I ended. Start there and pull out. Okay, so I've gone all the way around. So then I repeat the process. That's where I ended, pull out. That's where I ended, pull out. So exactly the same thing every time, wherever you ended that last line, you start the next. And as you work your way around, creating these little triangle shapes, you get this lovely little design like that. Let's go back out a little bit, you see? So next little bit then is how do you start the next one? You've got two choices really, because depending on how you, how you do this next one is how it works together. So you could actually repeat it. So I started top right and went down. You could start top right and go down and you get a little bit of a, a different pattern but what I like to do is I do a mirror image so this one for example see how it's going that way so I'm going to start here and I'm going to create a mirror image of that shape there 
So then, of course, the rules apply. I've got my little point. That's where I started. That's where my pen ended. So just as before, I'm going to draw that line and pull out. I know it's a bit of a different shape, but don't let that phase you. That's where I ended my line. Pull out. Same again. And then every single time, wherever your pen ended, your next line begins. You see? And again, I don't really need to be drawing it twice. Unless you want it to be a little bit heavier. And you see, you're getting a bit more of a rectangle now. But that's because the shape's different. You're still following the same way of applying each time. So you can't go anymore. So you see, I've got this lovely little fan design. Now, if you were doing exactly the same as this one, starting there and pulling down, you would have sort of a bit of a twist. It sort of be a rectangle, it twist a bit there, so you get a different shape. Still a lovely pattern. So let's look at this one then, and here's a very definite shape. So start again there, look mirror image of this one. And just because this has got three sides doesn't mean it's any different. I'm going to continue with that design just using the three sides there you go so let's have a look at that you see how you're getting this fan this side and then you've got the fan this side as well so let's look at this side of it let's go a bit bigger so again look there's my shape so i want a mirror image so i'm going to pull out there and then where i ended Pull out, pull out. So exactly the same formula, exactly the same design every single time. Now, if you find that you haven't got as many as me, maybe yours are a little bit wider. Or if you're not getting such a defined shape, maybe they are a bit too wide. So it might be worth having a little of a play first and uh, just having a, a go, just to see how you naturally draw these. Okay, see all the way along. So again, looking at this one, I need a mirror image. So I'm going to go that way, you see? Mirror image. And then just as before, round I go. Not too much there, so it's quite a small one, isn't it? So that gives me my shape all the way across so you've got this wonderful sort of mirror image this isn't going to be as mirrored but it's not a lot we can do with that it's just going to have to follow with whatever design we're doing so here we go this i'm going to work in exactly the same way so there's my shape look so there's my mirror image you see exactly the same thing again working my way around See, I'm just going back and forth. I'm just getting a th slightly thicker or a heavier line, see? I'm doing it really gently first and then I'm going over it because it's a little bit of a distance to travel. And along. I think we're all focusing on this one, Chris. I think it's a case that you've got to watch it a few times and, and see exactly where it goes. But once you've got it, See, look, here's the shape, mirror image. It looks amazing and you don't really quite know, or people that would look at your work wouldn't know where you'd started it. So it's really cool. So I'm going to turn it around. There you go. See, you've got this lovely shape. So you've got the fans. There you are. So let's turn it around. And I've got this section to do across here now. So from this one along mirror image see and as soon as you've done that mirror image you can go on in and you can follow the same process creating these little lines and along okay it's just a case of taking your time and looking at where the, the last one was and where this next one's going to be okay so look at this one for a minute. What can you see? Where's that mirror image? 
Let's have a quick look at that. Okay, mirror image. So here it is, there to there. And again, once you've got that, you can turn it whichever suits you. And just as before, follow the design. You'll notice that mine, I do tend to sort of keep to similar sizes. I think that helps with the illusion as well. But that's something you, you gain as confidence starts to build you. Uh, you sort of see that a bit more. There we go. All right. So let's look at this last one. Same sort of thing. There's my shape. So there's my mirror image. And I know I've really taken time with that today just to go through. Uh, so, of course, I will. I will show you how to do that. It's, uh, it, you know, it's important to take a bit of time over that to get it right. Let's have a look at it. There it is. OK. So let's have a look. There it is. Now you can see exactly how we did that. All right. And you see, just on the outside, I haven't really done anything. I've just got these little designs going along it. Now, I have got these extra bits and pieces going on around as well. I'm going to do a few, but I'm not going to go over complicated with it, I think, because it's on fabric. Sometimes simplicity is, is the best thing. When it's on paper, it's great. Um, but I'm going to just do a couple of a couple of little things. So first of all, then, I'm going to do some bubbles. And again... If you feel that you need to do this with your friction pen, just so you get a shape. We're going to do some little uh, rose shapes here. Let's just do a little one there. And then uh, up here as well. Again, I'm going to change slightly what we've got on there. I'm going to do the same rose design, but you'll see what I mean. Okay, a few there. So let's have a look at our instructions again. Okay, you see, oh, there's that little pattern look that we did. And there is look, instructions for doing what we've just done in the cross. But I'm focusing now on this one here. So you see, it just starts as a bubble when we've got a square, then a circle then a square, then a circle as we go. And I'm going to add some of these in as well. OK, so let's go a bit bigger if I can. OK, so starting then, I've got my bubble. I'm going to come in with, when I say square, I say it very loosely because it depends what shape you're starting with. Basically, four sides, OK? And then I'm going to put a circle inside it or a bubble anyway and then instead of drawing the square again the same way I'm going to start it in the middle there so it's almost like I get a diamond so it's like a square on its side then a circle and then I can go back to the square if you can fit it in so let's do that again I'm going to turn it slightly let's put that square in or say, say square loosely And then put my bubble in and then my square on its side. Then my circle. Then my square again. Turn it again. So every time I'm turning it, it means I'm getting a different sort of sort of way of this flower being. So you see, look, there's the diamond. There's the square, oh, sorry, the bubble, there's the square. Now, the smaller they get, you're going to get quite tricky, so don't try and do everything in it. Just take your time with it. There you go, little roses. But then here, it's going to uh, do a similar thing. So there's my square, there's my bubble, and then there's my square on its side. And there's my bubble. There's my square again, my bubble in the middle. So here, see, it's sort of slightly going behind, so I'm only going to get part of my 
square in there. Fill my bubble. Square on its side. Fill my bubble. Square. Okay, works quite nicely. And in. And then a lock. Okay. So, there we go. We've got that kind of thing. So rather than put lots of sort of bubbles and uh, loops and things in there, I'm just going to very gently come in and I'm going to add a few leaves. So let's bring in a couple of lines. Again, completely off what it's showing there. A couple of lines. But sometimes, you know, you just want to change things because it's how you feel at the time. And I think we should respond to that just because the instructions are there doesn't mean you've got to follow them exactly okay so let's go a bit bigger and what i'm going to do is i'm going to put a little leaf shape on the top there and then these little shapes along the edge there some one on the top so they're not touching that curved line it's slightly off there and then let's bring them down to join that line. Okay. Do you know what? Today I think that's all it, it needs. I don't really want to put loads of loops and things in. I'm just going to keep it clean and simple. You see, just put in these little leafy shapes. And then joining them back to that original first stem I drew there. You see? So let's come to this one. So same again, let's put a one on the top of each and then bring them down one side and down the other. So that's going to be up there. And then join them back to that line. I say this isn't on the instructions, but it's nice and felt like changing it up a bit. If you want to use the instructions, there's lots of loops on there you can add to it. Okay, let's have a little look at that. All right, see, so we've got this lovely sort of flowing design there. So I did say I was going to also bring in this one here. It's, it's a real common one. I use it a lot. And it's a case of bringing in, let's do one here, like a curve with a little loop on the end. Just fill it in. Curve with a loop on the end. Let's add a few of those in. They can be as big or as small as you like. I'm not going to take any on these sides. I'm just going to leave it. I've just got like little flourishes around so you can do three if I want. Maybe you want that look. Like that. It's just nice to have something, isn't it? Just I think a little bit clean. So okay, um how to colour this centre section in. The the outside frame I think is pretty straightforward. With these ones, it's like doing let's have a look, it's like doing this one again. You see where we were dark on the, the line there going out to a white. So I think that's pretty similar there. And then doing this inside section. You look at this one. So you're doing a line again, inside section there. That would work quite nicely. But the main bit on the inside. Again, I'm going to come in. Oops, not the camera. Trying to my pencils. So, um... Yeah, um, it's a decision on colour, isn't it? I think I'm going to go with the main colours here, which is sort of my reds and oranges. Let's have a look. So I've got my red, my orange, yellow. And of course, as always, I've got a darker colour in here as well. This is my uh, a real dark blue there. And let's go in a bit bigger. So colouring in, the first thing I would do is I'd look for these fan shapes. You see these here? So you've got a full fan shape here, here. And what I would do is I'd put my darkest colour at the bottom of each of those fan shapes. So there we are. And there it is again. 
see and then there's the other one so I'm looking for the fan shapes and I'm putting a bit of colour at the bottom of the fan shape okay so there's another one let's have a look further down on there look see and then there's full one there now here I'm only getting sections or part of them but I'm still going to do the same thing I'm still going to go at the bottom of that fan design you see it's sort of searching them out and, and just defining those areas and then on this side look I've got see that's spreading out there so I'm looking at the bottom of that and it's spreading there this one comes in this way and you've got that one in there and looking at this one there's some there a bit there okay and of course this one just a little bit okay so if i bring in my uh, orange oh look let's just do that bit at the top there as well hardly any there there's not much to sort of go on is there and again just bring a bit of orange in there we are so i'm not going all the way up again it's just about working it in a little bit adding that little hint isn't it there we go and of course it's going to blend a bit better with the yeah uh, and put the water on or if you're using gel that kind of thing you know if you're just wanting a little bit of something shadow wise you know you're just adding a bit of gray then you would still do it in the bottom bit so inevitably you're not going to really get in the middle bits there but that doesn't matter because you still need a little bit of the fabric showing through underneath okay See, just sort of uh, picking it round, and then uh, along there, and into those bits. But of course, whether you add colour or not is your choice. You don't have to. There's no nobody forcing you to. It's your quilt. You do what works for you. And then I'm going to bring a bit of yellow in there. Just to give it a bit of brightness on the top. There we go. Okay. Now, I don't know if you remember the, the actual quilt that you saw it on uh, Sewing Street that day. I, actually, I'll, I'll bring it home because it's at the office um, and show you next week. Because Leslie did that one and she's done it purely in just black she's not added any color whatsoever so it might be a nice one to have a look at and just do a bit of a comparison being that we've now done four blocks you might sort of be sitting on the fence thinking do i do a color or not so it might be nice i think for you to have a look at that so you can sort of see both versions that's why i've done color on this one because i thought it'd be nice that you could see both versions okay let's have a look at that there it is so you see what we've actually done now when when it's blended with a bit of water you can see that i've actually picked out those little fan shapes so they're a little bit more defined now you can sort of see where they are and you could always come in and do a dark bit in the middle but i'm gonna stick with my darker blue and just going to put some over the top of the red just a little bit right in the bottom edge just so you can uh, you see the difference you see where that's gone darker definition there just get a bit bigger there you see okay so of course a uh, project or plan for this week then is to get this coloured up and a bit of water on it so we and then we can set it all and then this is uh, our four main blocks done uh, so i would yeah 
if you're using a light blue, it's it's not going to give you a, as much as an impact as that one has. Uh, if you're not sure about which blue, then you want to be going for... Let's have a look at the colours we've got in this pack. See, there's a few of them. Um, let's have a look. Okay, you see, you've got quite a few colours there. You see, this one, I'm actually using this one as my extra colour. Let's have a look at this. You see there? Because um, I've got a bit of blue in my other fabrics that I'm going to mix with it. See a bit of blue there? And it's a little bit bright. So I would say that one's a bit bright. That one's a bit bright as well. You see the difference? So what I'd be looking at using, if we look at these three, you've got a choice here. Let's have a look. Um, I've just used Deep Indigo. That, that really gives it a, a, a good whack. But you could also use the Iron Blue. The sea blue, again, yeah, you could use the sea blue, but definitely not this one. See, this one is, there you go, iris blue. It's a little bit, uh, oh, there you go. It's a little bit too pale. So one of those three, I use the indigo. See, I'm just going to put that bit of red back over the top of it, and that is really going to give it some depth. But if you're not sure, do your colours first. You know, add your water, see how you feel about it, and then come back in and add that if you want to. Uh, I'm just that I'm I'm confident that I know it's gonna give me the impact I want. See, it's gonna really help those bits stand out. So uh, if that helps, it it helps actually that we've all got the same pencils, doesn't it? So it's it's been really useful, of course, uh, worthwhile. So okay. So, right, I'm going to leave you with that now. I think we've we've done uh, the actual piece we're going to do. I say a little bit different than on the instructions. I'm going to do a bit of blue in my roses there. And then I'm going to do a bit of blue inside this stripe. And then I'm going to colour in the, the ribbon just like I did with the dragonfly. And as soon as I get that done, which is probably going to be next couple of days, I'll... Post it so you can see how it's done. Of course, once I've added a bit of water to this as well, that'll blend out a touch more. And uh, yeah, so I look forward to seeing everybody else's and seeing what you're going to do with it. If you get to you, this point and you've done all four and you think, do you know what, that's it. I've done all four and I'm going to reproduce them uh, twice more. Is that going to give you what? Four? That's going to give you your 12 for your quilt. That's absolutely fine. Or if you're going to change them about a bit, you could do this inside a circle, things like that. It's going to make a fabulous quilt. It really is. If you don't want to do a quilt and you're doing cushions, great. But if you want to see how the others are working, next week we're going to move into set two. One second, here we go. Set two in the stencil. So that gives me the bee, gives me the hummingbird, the fan. And that feather or a leaf, whichever way you want to sort of do it, uh, that's the ones we're going to be working on next. So if you haven't got them, but you want to see how they work, that's fine. If you haven't got them and you want them, they're on my website. So you can go ahead and get them from there if you want to. Uh, I say just just come along and watch and see what we do. But um, good luck if you've done the four and that's where you're going to stay. Um, but I'd still like to see what you're doing and how you make your quilt. Um, but yeah, we're going to move on to that. I'm going to do the B next week. So that'll be Sunday at three o'clock as normal. So, okay, uh, all being well. Have a good week, everybody. Let me know how you're getting on with this. And uh, I will see you at three o'clock next week so we can do the B and start our next set of four. All right, so have a good one, everybody, and I'll see you then. Take care. Bye.